my name is Kendall Henry. Um, everybody know me as, as KC. I play with Stanley and the 10C Plus Knights for the past 20 years. Um, I'm the president and founder of the II Cultural Dance Company, and that was founded in 2005. Our main goal is to preserve the culture through dance. Um, my, my involvement with, with festival started from a very, very young age. And, 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 I, and I would say um, all of our involvement in festival started at a very young age because as a spectator, you know, looking on to the, at the parades, looking on at the different activities, you know, we was involved in, in festival. And that was a, a, a tremendous thrill you know, to be a part, of, to be a spectator. Um, right now, I am the chairperson of the parade committee, and also a member of the food fair committee. And those two, those two committees are, are very, very near and dear to me. I, I put my all in it. Um, I love what I do, and um, I'll do it all over again. <laughs> Hi, I am Vivian Ebison Flood. Um, I've worn many hats um, in, in the professional world and in the cultural world. Um, and so to follow, I, I, I must agree with, as Mr. Henry has said, that we've long been spectators. Um, and we not even realizing it that we've been participating in festival, not just actively in it, but on the sidelines watching. Being very involved and enthused, I think festival is one of the best times of the year. It's, I truly love music. I'm truly a, a Stanley and the Ten Sleepless Nights um, individual from very young um, and being blessed with their presence and, and being known them for, for a long time. And my latest thing, um, I, I am a business owner, um, very much involved in being able to interact um, with a lot of individuals in regards to fabrics and discussions and, and providing um, and assisting in, in, in troops getting their forties and their outfits together. And then my last stint is now involvement with the Kushan Cultural Group, uh, which we are very proud of. Um, I'm serving as the lead, and I serve on that with a team of dynamic. I'm um, two of the individuals that are Mr. Henry and Ms. Um, Sandra Gerard Leong um, to preserve and, and, and preserve and showcase our, our rich and our dynamic um, Virgin Islands culture and preserve it. Um, and so I'm very glad to be here and to have an opportunity to have this conversation. Um, conversation among ourselves and conversations with you. Hey, I'm Sandra Gerard Leah. And I can't even remember when I got involved in festival, but one of the highlights was working with George Bagoon O'Reilly with the parades. I've also been in parades, I, I would say for the last 40 years. It's just been a an abundance of joy and fun to be in different festival troops and to come down the road. That's the one time of the year that I can be me, come down the road, I know you or I don't know you, I smile with you, I take pictures with you, but the music gets into you and you come down the road enjoying yourself. But now it's to give back to the young people and to bring the older, persons, our ancestors, alive. We want everyone to know what festival is, what festival was, what festival can be, and share that historical information with our young people, with our guests that come to the island. I think one of the things that's key is that there's clearly a difference between festival and carnival. Yes. Um, and, and the word and, and makes really the difference. Um, festival is an activity that's really surrounding around a religious time, which, which transcends in our whole um, Christmas activities, um, New Year's, Three Kings, that's celebrated and it was very much a rich part of our, our, our culture, particularly on St. Croix. You have carnival activities, um, and sometimes they get into a twine, but they're very, yeah. they're very different. Um, Carnival has a different connotation, it's actually a celebration, it's actually linked to Lent and the Lenten season, it occurs before that. So we may say, okay, we haven't St. Croix um, Carnival, um, but really it's St. Croix Festival, um, based on when it, when it occurs, when it's being celebrated and what we're celebrating. Um, so it has a very unique history and it has its own cultural perspective. And to, 
you know, it, it linked to that celebration of the time and really going back to our, our ancestral linkage. Um, when there wasn't much available, but they celebrated and appreciated the religious aspect of our culture. And whether that was by estates, um, because you have the festival queens that are actually translated from being the estate queens. Um, and, and so that translated in its own celebration and basically congealed from different estates more than likely getting together and having one main activity um, where the community could enjoy. It has transitioned very much. I mean, I don't know, Sandra, can you see um, your, your perspective on, on that whole issue? And it also transitioned to a point where people came out over the Christmas season and celebrated. So people from different areas came out to one place to celebrate the days of Christmas, the second day of Christmas, the 26th, where, you know, there was a time where they would have, we would have just a party where people put on all the clothes they had in the house. <laughs> you know, you put on three pair of pants and three skirt, and it had to be as full as you could get. You know, the kang kang that you had hide in the back. You put on the blouse and a t-shirt underneath and the head tie, but then you just added. So when you came down, you were, you know, a hundred pounds heavier than what you're used to being. And you were fat and you were, but you looked good and you had fun and we smiled and we laughed. And we just had a good time and we danced to the music. Don't talk about the head ties. You take every piece of cloth you had in the house and you tie it around your head in different ways. And then we had the masqueraders who came out. And when they first started again, they started with all the clothes and the strips. And, you know, it was just a fun time for us to engage. And I think it, it supported family. Yes, you, you it celebrated was. celebrated family and friends, Definitely. which was the one, you know, the one thing that no matter of what mega means or extravagant means you had family and, and friends and it also included you know i'm of a crucian father and a puerto rican mother but who was raised here because she came here when she was 28 days old so saint croix was her home she was only born in culebra she came to saint croix on a sailboat so this was home but we always had that puerto rican side of our family my grandmother, to the day she died, she'd tell you hello, goodbye, and that was it. She spoke to all her grandchildren in Spanish. We answer her in English. And that was, that's the way life was. But they got involved. You know, and they got involved for Three Kings because we celebrated Christmas and we celebrated Three Kings. And again, now our children don't do it. You know, we're, we're trying to bring it back. But in those days, it was a celebration of community and a celebration of family, big time, with a celebration of the church involved. And, and, and also, you know, um, with the serenade, yes. you know, um, during that Christmas time, we know automatically that we will go house to house, place to place, celebrating our history, our families, and what not you, like Stanley the said now is a Hollywood production. Exactly. All the lights, because like, ago we just jump in the truck for, and they did it for 15 days leading up to Christmas. Christmas. You know, they ended serenade on Christmas morning for somebody house that they knew, yeah. you know. So that that was a big, big celebration upon itself. The other day when we were talking about um, Puerto Rican Virgin Islands friendship and, and there was a particular article that listed all of the names of individuals who you know are of Puerto Rican heritage and of Crucian heritage and, and they link them together what was interesting you go down that list and you say but I know that person I know this person I know that person even at whatever age group um, and I think you know I, I you know from what I'm aware um, you can that influence came with the whole issue of coming to St. Croix with for cutting of cane and sugar cane. Um, and that's where a lot of individuals migrated to St. Croix and stayed, um, but became a part of St. Croix. You can't say to them, you're a Puerto Rican, you're a, you're a crucial, mm -hmm. you know, and you have Puerto Rican heritage. So I know it's what Sandra alluded to with her family. Um, and there's the linkage, you think on the big, you know, the big family names, you think on, you know, the Encarnacion family, and you know, it's many of them that came here on a, you know, they'll tell you there was somebody that came on a boat. Oh. <laughs> um, and they're here and their children are here and their grandchildren are here and they're in significant areas. 
um, and you know you have Sandra's family as well and so that whole influence it's it's you can see the influence in our cultural dishes. You can see it in the, the activities that we celebrate, that Three Kings Day is a part of festival, um, that that is a celebration, not just of the event, what Three Kings Day signifies, but really of its cultural significance to our Puerto Rican counterparts. To answer that question, it's, it's many fold. Mm -hmm. um, and I think part of what um, we're, we're happy to partner with and say so we're being the Kushan Cultural Group and the Division of Festival and all the other cultural groups, TSK, all of the individuals who we, you know, we've, we've interacted with, because we saw that change and we recognize that there's a change in time, but you can't preserve what you don't know. You can't, the story is written by whoever tells the story. And so the Crucian Cultural Group, you know, sat down with, you know, 15 individuals. And like I said, it's, it's sitting here with two of them, um, two, you know, and we said, you know, you, you reached out. No one said no. They were all recognizable faces, invested and had a passion for culture. But it has changed. And I think it has changed because there's economic reasons. There's, there's, there's just the reality. If you're, you're a, um, a, an individual that has a troop, you, you want your troop to win. Of course. You, you, you <laughs> register in three and four hundred people for them to lose. Um, and your judges judge on, based on what, what's the flavor. But the issue is, is how can we really interact and make that all congeal back together and, be, and get the best of both worlds? And, and, and you know, that's why it's so important, like organizations like the Fusion Cultural Group, to put back that meaning, you know, and, and to have some type of you know, context to the, the word festival because it's very important, you know, I mean, to answer the question, I would say yes and no. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I would say yes and no is because I think it's our job to put out there what is the meaning of festival. You know, it's like to say, to hold somebody accountable. Yeah. You know, I think we, we, we need to continue to teach like, like, like Ms. Gerard said, you know, the, the next generation, you know, why is it important, you know, to do this? Why is it important to do that? Why do we hold events and Boxing Day, the day after Christmas, Three Kings well, Day? And, and just say, it's really Christmas second day. Christmas second day, <laughs> yes, second day. exactly. Yeah, it's Christmas, <laughs> Boxing Day, it's Christmas, Christmas second, second day. day. Yes, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yes, I stand corrected. <laughs> yes. Boxing Day, we appreciate our other Caribbean neighbors yes. and their celebration yes. of yes. Boxing Day, but yeah. and, it's Christmas second day. And, and you know, the, the, the next thing too, and I know it, it's a very itchy, it, yeah, very difficult topic, is that, you know, we look on the outside at other people's carnivals and festivals, and we try to compare it to our own. And growing up, I have always learned and knew that St. Croix Crucian Christmas Festival was unique and that you couldn't go nowhere else in the Caribbean or in the world and find what you found and St. Croix anywhere else. And that's why, I think that's why I fall in love with festival, I fall in love with the Virgin Islands culture yeah. because it's unique by itself and we don't need to integrate or we don't have to integrate anything from the outside to come in. I use uh, Rigidims as an example and Winona Hendrix. And when we are planning our troops to come down, there has to be a historical perspective to the truth. And the one year that we did local candies, we talked about each candy. So that when we came down to the judging station, we have a historical story of what our troop portrays as we come down. And that, we lost a little bit of that. Yeah. We became a little bit more commercialized. But again, on the other hand, it takes us teaching people and saying to them, we can do this. So once again, we can have the troops that have a historical flair and taste to it. So the significance of celebrating festival on both sides of St. Croix um, was interesting and is interesting in and of itself and the changes that we're now seeing um, and the discussions that are occurring, um, again it goes back to the conversation as to why things happen the way they happen. Um, from my recollection, 
um, and I know both my, 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 my joint friends here on the panel have their recollection. You know, you had, you had a, a parade in Christiansted, you had a parade in Fredericksted, um, and it alternated. Um, you had children's parade in one town, um, adults parade in the other, um, and it, it alternated. And then you had the, actually both parades in, in one town and alternating town to town. And now we've gone to significantly just occurring in one town. I think what I saw from my end is that you have some folks who don't travel from Christiansted to Fredericksted mm -hmm. for whatever reason. And you have folks who don't travel from Fredericksted to Christiansted for whatever reason. Um, so it lent to that. You had individuals, I know we would always say in Fredericksted, the street them wider. <laughs> Got more street, you can get in, in and out quicker than you can in Christiansted. And you had different routes in, in the town of Christiansted. But that activity, I think, by alternated, allowed everybody to experience it. The ones who would travel to either town did that. The individuals who were just saying, okay, next year they're in Christiansted, next year they're in Fredericksted, I'm coming up. The same was the village. Mm -hmm. You had boot owners who had a boot in Fredericksted, and the next year they took a break and didn't have a boot in Christiansted, and so they alternated and they were able to plant. That aspect of alternating, I think, kind of leveled it out across the island, allowed everybody's participation, and allowed both tongues to have the flavor and to have the experience. Um, and I think it's key. I think it's something that really needs to be looked at. Um, I know there's plans in regards to the stadium being built and what's gonna happen at Festival Village. Um, but I think that having that, because of the uniqueness of having two towns, we were able to spread the flavor of Christmas and festival across the entire island. What I see happening now, and I don't know, you know, I'm sure you guys have experienced that. Well, you got some people who don't come to the Frederick said Festival, mm -hmm. just yes. because of distance. You know, I remember being on festival and Christian said, wow. And those who didn't drive could have get off a taxi bus. In the very ages of a taxi bus, you were right in downtown Christian said, and you could drop off. But the distance and the travel and, you know, traversing and getting back and forth, I think has limited, in mean, whatever town it is, limits the experience um, for ourselves and our visitors. So, you know, I say a lot of things, it's, it's really a conversation, um, I think, you know, that's going to be had. I think has started and again saying why did we do what we did why did we do it that way and not because that was the way it is and not because we said we're going to change it but we got like if we're changing it why are we changing it and what's the impact of change we also had a time where people lived in our towns they did, they did. you know you had people that lived in christian said town and could walk to go to the village they lived up on the back street, you know, Queen Cross Street, Queen Street, Hill Street, Green Street, and they could come down, they could walk and come down to the to the village. Those from Gallows Bay could walk across. They could even walk on the shoreline and come in. And then you had people who lived in Fredericksted Town. And all of a sudden now we barely have anybody living in our downtowns that we call it. Should it happen? I love having activities happening on both sides of the island. And yes, there are some people who don't travel up to this day. There are some children who don't travel up to this day because their parents don't travel from one end of the island to the other. And, and that is that prerogative. They can do whatever they want. But as a people, we want to share the culture. We want to share the scenery. We want to share the food. We want to share a little bit of knowledge with everybody. So there needs to be a dialogue as to what we're going to do to involve both sides of the island. I remember when we had a village where the graveyard is now in a state slab and people went to it. You know, so it's, you're going to have people moving from side to side and people going here and people going there. But it's time for a dialogue to figure out what it is that we need to do, why we need to do it, and how we're going to do it. I think, I think, I think the dialogue is always there. I think people have always been talking about it from the time it stopped. Yeah. But again, it's important to actually sit and listen and actually make it happen. And um, that's the important essence of, of, of it all. And I remember enjoying playing music in both villages yeah. and also 
performing in the parade, in both parades, because we always used to say, uh, which parade will be Christian That's said it. this year? Because <laughs> yep. we know that parade will be the language. It's either great. the Cheryl Parade yeah. or, or the, the Adults, adults Parade. Because yep. we know we had to build ourselves for that long route, you know? But the both of them have its pros and cons, and can definitely be developed into something that everybody enjoy and going back to the reason why we had it in both towns is because of that concept of sharing mm -hmm. you know because you had individuals who had who were boot owners in christian said and you had individuals who were boot owners in frederick said yes. and like um casey said earlier you knew that when you were in christian said you could go to this boot you know that you know when you're in frederick said this is who you're going to eat from um and so but the other piece that it allows you as well is that the fact that you know, when you're young and you got plenty of energy, you could stay out all night. Right. Stay up all night. You know, you like you sit down now, you watch that schedule, and you say, How did you do that? <laughs> but you know, you start out in Christian Stead, based on the entertainment and end up in Frederick Stead or end start in Frederick Stead and end up in Christian Stead. You know, I know something that happened at my home. You know, you'd always have a friend. So our house was the location house in Christian Stead. And so our friends from Frederick said if they came up and in Christian Stead and we did it late. You know, my parents will come around in the morning and say, who that one be? <laughs> because somebody sleep into your house. They know that you have a house. They know your house close to the village. They know you could go there to the bathroom. You could go there. You could see individuals coming with a the bag. They're moving in. They're bathing. They're like, okay, fine. We're ready to go. And you're going until 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. And you're catching every activity. Right. So they were set up the same. You just had distinct booth owners who were at those villages. And I would say that. They, probably each village they equate in size to the village you have now. Mm -hmm. You know, Definitely. Christian said it were, the, were the same sizes. I, I, I uh. still I still can't imagine when talking to um, Mama Rosalie, Rosalie Barnes Clark. Yes. She always had a booth here in Yes, Frederick in Frederick said, yeah. Um, and when I talk to her sons who always helped her in the village, you know, and they start to break it down how the village was here on the basketball court. Uh -huh. I mean, they had no tennis court. Yes. And when they explained it to me, they had close to 20 boots yeah. in that area. And the stage always faced east. Yes. So in the grassy area where the benches are right now is where the stage used to be. And I said, my son, I said, where the, I said, where the, where the playground, where the rise them used to be? He said, the rise them used to be across the road, road in the playground. In the playground. I said, really? He said, yes. I, because I know in the playground is where we used to play baseball too. Okay. You know what I mean? So, again, the village them had different vibes, as, as we like to say now. Yeah. You know, it had different vibes because of the different type of cooks you had, the different uh, entertainment you had. And like I said, you know, back then you used to go from Christian said to Christian said to Frederick said, in a heartbeat you know because you had some people who believed that that ride was not long yeah it was nothing and then you had some that yeah. believed that ride was too yeah, long yeah. that they could just choose one and then, that night and, and just go and then you had the definition of what age group you were in yeah. if you're young <laughs> everything was shot <laughs> and if you just get your license was <laughs> you mind driving east west 10 times you know what yes, i mean uh, casey you're gonna be ready that time i'm coming back I'm for coming your back. man to go back to christian said to come back Frederick said so you know, everything is relative, yes. they say, right? Mm -hmm. And you yeah. know, one name that just came to mind is Gwene, mm -hmm. yes. who had the restaurant on King Street, yes, she... got the corner to Vija Mara Mara where Vija Morales mm -hmm. was, and she always had a boot. Yeah. Yes. You know, Gwene cooking her shop, Bilado, and then you had Bellado, and, 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 yeah, and Liliana still yeah. has Lemme a boot. Flag and, and exactly, yeah. but again, it was a camaraderie yeah. amongst our people, mm -hmm. and there were safe homes. Yes. Yeah. In Christian said, your house was a safe home, my house was a safe mm -hmm. home, but my Aunt Isabel in Harrigan was a safe, safe home. home. Mm -hmm. You know, so you had a place to go. You didn't have to worry. You weren't going to get lost. No. You weren't going to get left because you always had a safe place. And that's a thing. Yeah? We had family, although my family could be from Frederickstead. Yeah. I had still had family in Christian. Christian I could have go by Auntie Carmen. But exactly. You know, house and that's what I was safe place. home. You know what I mean? So it, it's just ironic that, that that happened and it happened just naturally. Yeah. And you didn't. And because of that, you could enjoy the festivity because you weren't concerned mm -hmm. about where you're going to end up. <laughs> but that also yeah. goes the next step of family mm -hmm. and where family members and young children don't know their families no, yeah. nowadays. So they don't know who they're related to. And again, that's, that's cultural. That's something we need to bring back. We need children to know who they belong to 
who is your family? You know, who is your auntie? Who you fa? Who you? You know, why is it that she named Peterson and I named Peterson and I don't know who she is? Carlisle is one. But that ties in. That ties into what we did with the lantern parade, um, the tree lighting. Um, the fact that we had those lists of names of families of, of, of our, our local indigenous families and really realize, you know, what I thought was so fun is that folks were like, where are we, we there? Yeah. Where, where, and you, I mean, they're looking through hundreds of names trying to find where they are um, and, and who that, who your family member, you know, the names and have those names we, we see. And, and that's why I have to take off the first name and just put a last, a last name <laughs> because people were like, why, why does I love Vic? and not Evelyn so, and you know so again and people still talk about that us having the list I didn't realize how many people had looked at it so that the vibe each each village had its own vibe the entertainment as far as I could remember was never in competition with the no. other no. so it allowed the traversing but together it allowed it to give you one great experience so you could be to Frederick said village and Christian said village all in the same night, depending on who playing. Due to COVID, I think there is a, a new way of us informing, educating, showing people, spending time with them, having fun with them. We have the Facebook and the Twitter and the WhatsApp and the YouTube and the websites. So this is a beginning of a new way of educating and informing and sharing. To, to answer the question on how we move forward, and I, I must agree with Sandra. You know, we, we've started and this is so exciting. Um, the Kushan Cultural Group and, and what we set out to do um, to preserve, to showcase, to enhance and to maintain. Um, but that is with open arms yes. to other entities because every entity has its its area of expertise but there's a common thread and we've we've got to not only archive it as we're doing but we also have to be able to share and explain why things are the way they are we may have lost certain things because individuals may not have recognized their relevance the cultural relevance, the importance to us, what it played in our community, um, in our Kushan culture. And not just as we showcase it here for ourselves, but to explain mm -hmm. and to say why we're doing it. I like to say, I think that we're, we're in a unique time. And I'm going to say we're, because across the going, we, we're in a time of millennials. We can't we can not say it, they, it's there. Mm -hmm. But I think our generation, you've heard me say this, is, is in a significant spot because we're between the generation that didn't use the computer. You know, our parents didn't do that. And so we have that portion. And this group that, you know, the millenniums now who have a total different way of communicating. And how do we bridge that gap? Um, how do we say to the millenniums, you, you can't go forward without reaching back. And our generation saying, you can't preserve without reaching forward. And so we're, at a, we're in the middle, we're right in the middle. And so I, I like to say we play an important role because we're the gel. Yeah. We're the gel to say, you know what, you jumping up in the street, but jumping up means this. Mm -hmm. And there's a certain behavior and a certain, you know, there's, there's a vulgarity that, you know, that, that's not a part of us. That's not us, that's not your culture. You know, it's about when we talk about people support it, but you talk about Juve, but we know about tramping. Mm -hmm. You know, you know about holding hand, lying forward, lying back. That's what we know. But, you know, so if you see that, but we can't hold folks accountable and we can't get upset if we haven't said, you know what, this is the way yes. it was. This is why we did it that way. And, and, and you, know, if you know why it's so important for us to continue to share? And, and, and I will say this because I think I'm in the middle. I think I fall in. We join in you, you know. <laughs> Oh, I we may we well, may I have a little difference in our hair color, but we we still we still, <laughs> no, we we still, with, you. We still with you. We still with you. We still with you. And 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 the, and why why I say it's important for us to share is because I think I think the newer generation is is just doing things without any significant meaning to it. 
And why our job is more important than, than, than no is because, yes, we have the, the, the younger troop leaders and the younger um, participants in the parade um, doing things differently, but they don't know how things was done. That experience. Uh, yes, and that's why it's important for us not to bash, not to bring them down, but to Everything. bring them to the table. Exactly. And that's one thing with the Kujan Cultural Group. We, we willing to share. Yes. We willing to share. You call us, you call any of them. Yes. Like you said, when you call we to do this, we ain't had no, nope. ain't had no pause in it. You know, <laughs> it, it really didn't, and I appreciate it. Yeah, this. it was automatic, yes, because yeah. this is what we enjoy. Because we know somebody had to teach we. And, and share what they share to which how we got to this level that we are today and we appreciate them and we want to continue to teach the next generation. But the beauty is that they want to do something yes. Yes. and because they want to do something we need to teach yes. them. We yes. need to educate them as to what it is that we used to do. So just the fact that they want to do it and they want to be in the parade, it's a plus. And it's that they missed out on that because maybe their parents weren't involved. So they don't have anybody to give them the story. And this is what the story is about. And if you want to be married, then go out and when you get in the jet time.